Hi, I'm Paris, and I've noticed recently the proliferation of energy drinks, especially at stores like Whole Foods and Sprouts. More and more of the drink aisle is being taken up by energy drinks. And now we're on to the next generation, which is drinks that don't want to be considered an energy drink because those have the reputation of being loaded with caffeine and sugar. These are your natural energy drinks, or as I call them, the we're not energy drinks energy drinks. I picked up a few that looked particularly interesting to me and all have one ingredient in common. I want to see if I can find an energy drink that works for me because energy drinks generally don't. I can't deal with the caffeine very much. So there might be a winner in this bag. Otherwise, it's back to tea, Earl Grey, hot. And if you don't know where that's from, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Epic review. Each of the drinks I purchased were from Whole Foods and they went for about two to two and a half dollars each. I'll link to all of them down below this video. Increasingly when I go to Whole Foods I feel out of place. I don't know if it's an age thing. Does anyone else have that same experience? I'm starting to think of Whole Foods as being by millennials for millennials. They have great stuff at the store but I just feel a little odd there like people are looking at me. Maybe it's the shirts. So here are the drinks I picked up. I got two of these because the name is so good. They're Yerbucha. It sounds like a Norwegian drink, doesn't it? No, yerbucha is yerba mate, one of my favorite drinks now, combined with kombucha, which I accidentally drank a bottle of, an entire bottle that was meant to be diluted and to last you several weeks. It was concentrated and I drank it all in one sitting. We won't discuss too much what happened after that other than it wasn't pleasant, so I'm willing to give it a try in its diluted form. And I picked this one up, Focus Aid from a series where the name of the product suggests what you might use it for, even though they have the FDA disclaimer, this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, etc. And they have a new variant of my favorite, the Yerba Mate. This is a caffeinated version of it in a little thin can when you need some, but not a full blast of it. First up is Yerbucha, pineapple flavor and berry flavored. This is a combination of yerba mate and kombucha. Now kombucha is a tea, but it's a fermented tea and um, it's fermented with bacteria and yeast. So you tend to have a probiotic mixture, at least that's what they advertise with it. They list how many bacteria are in it at the time the batch is made. The first ingredient is kombucha. The second is smoke-free yerba mate. I hate it when I open my yerba mate and smoke comes out. And then with the yellow bottle, some pineapple juice. With the pink bottle, some berry juice. The kombucha is made with sugar. So there's 15 calories in this 10 ounce bottle. And as you can see on the nutrition label, not a lot of other quantifiable items except for caffeine, which is listed a little further down below. 51 milligrams of caffeine in this bottle. Now about the caffeine matin debate, matin being supposedly the caffeine version found in yerba mate. If you haven't seen my previous videos about this, it's a tea that's very popular in South America, also consumed in some other places in the world, but largely grown in South America. It's prepared in a unique way traditionally, and I'll link to a video where I show how to do that at the end of this video. But it also comes now in canned and bottled forms that are much easier to consume and don't require much preparation. But people for years now have been saying when they drink the yerba mate, it does have caffeine in it, the molecular structure is the same, but people have reported when they drink yerba mate, which has a caffeine, they don't have the same effects, the same jitteriness and sometimes the heart palpitation type issues as they do when drinking coffee that has the same amount of caffeine. So it turns out from my research on this, this is not conclusive, that it's um, same caffeine, but yerba mate has these other xanthines, which are related to caffeine and can also affect cardiac and other aspects of your metabolism. And it's possible that um, having those other things in there with the caffeine is somehow counteracting for some people the effects, the negative effects that caffeine have. In my experience, I can't have more than a cup of regular caffeinated tea or my heart lets me know it is not happy. So I was worried with the yerba mate because it seemed so strong and concentrated when I made my first batch the traditional way, but I had no ill effects from it. And because I was doing the video and I had to keep drinking more and, and redoing some scenes, I ended up drinking a lot of it. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna pay for this later. My heart is not gonna like it. But no, I did not have negative effects. Now this is just anecdotal and it's just me, but um, turns out there may actually be a reason for that. 
Now kombucha is tea, fermented tea, so I'm sure it contributes to the caffeine content of this. So I'm going to go easy on this. The uh, other issue though, uh, oh, I didn't consider the bottles may overflow because there's only one of these I think that's uh, carbonated. What else could that mean? Is it still fermenting? Okay, the, lots of stuff rising to the top. There's a foam on it and it smells like alcohol. And it's still going here. All right. Let's see if this behaves the same way. Did I overshake it? Oh, yep. This has got a head on it too. Not nearly as much as that one. That worries me. Let's see if this has the alcohol smell. Very faint, very strong. I think I won't drink that one. I will take a taste of this one. What's a little alcohol? Other smells in it, maybe it's berry, maybe it's something from the kombucha. I'm just worried after my previous experience with it. Ah. It's a strong taste. I don't taste the yerba mate in it right off. <clears throat> Leaves a flavor on my tongue like I just drank a, a carbonated drink. It's tangy and zazzy on my tongue too. It's not carbonated, however, in very small print at the very bottom, it says here, natural strands may appear the live raw beverage, natural fermentation may produce a trace amount of alcohol of less than 0.5%. And your average beer is about 5%, so it's one-tenth the alcohol of beer, but that's the alcohol I'm smelling. <laughs> now, either this one might have a little more alcohol, or else that yerba mate really wasn't smoke-free. Five minutes after opening the bottle, I've still got non-stop bubbles coming up to the top. This is really mysterious. I think it's time to move on <laughs> to a different drink. This is Focus Aid. It does not have kombucha in it. It's um, to help you focus, but they don't clearly say that. They suggest that. The list of things they put in. There's a lot of stuff in this particular drink, a lot of things that they add, as well as a few things like stevia that are basically just to sweeten it, but not to add many calories. If you can see on the top, they say refreshing taste, 45 calories clean, lightly carbonated, and my favorite, not an energy drink. And there's quite a lot of vitamins and other things in here based on the numerous things that they add. The yerba mate though is listed as yerba mate extract from leaves. Now does that mean it wasn't brewed as a tea? In that case, am I going to get those same things in addition to the caffeine? that helped, to, for me at least, to seemingly counteract the bad effects of the caffeine. Let's see what focus tastes like. This is lightly carbonated, but I don't have stuff coming out the top of it. No alcohol smell, but a weird smell. Mmm. It's like a soda. They couldn't decide what flavor to give it. Yeah, I don't think they know what focus tastes like either. It's a bunch of different flavors together. And it's not very harmonious. And finally, new carbonated yerba mate. This comes in a variety of flavors, just like uh, the regular canned yerba mate. It is a smaller can, and yet there's 80 milligrams of naturally occurring caffeine in this can. That's a substantial amount for one drink. There's also some sweetener. This can will have, um, about 100 calories in total. In the list of ingredients, almost halfway down, they list yerba mate extract, and then after that they list brewed yerba mate. So that's interesting that they do it separately, and again I wonder about the yerba mate extract, if that includes all the same stuff. I'm going to grab the cans of this, the regular non-carbonated cans, and see what they say. A much larger non-carbonated can. I've been drinking these now for several weeks. Not more than one a day though. It does have 150 milligrams of naturally occurring caffeine per can. That's 
more than a cup of coffee that you're getting from this. But interestingly, in the ingredients, the very first ingredient is purified water, then organic brewed yerba mate, then uh, brewed hibiscus flowers, cane sugar, then yerba mate extract. So this also contains yerba mate extract, but since they're supposed to put the ingredients in the list of order of how much of that is in the container, this is mostly or largely or at least more actually brewed yerba mate and this is more of the extract which I assume is some kind of a powder that they add to it. Read those labels. Now I've had a couple of these before and I haven't had any bad effect from them so it's okay but I don't know what I think about that, that um, extract versus actual freshly brewed yerba mate which is what I'm expecting when I buy this. The flavor is cranberry pomegranate, it's carbonated, it is sweetened, and it's pretty good. I like these drinks enough to drink them because they taste good, as well as the yerba mate that's in them. I'm not sure what the takeaway from all of this is. I still like this brand and the yerba mate in this form, which is mostly yerba mate. When you're combining it with other things, I think you can't really predict the effect you ha might have after drinking a can or a bottle of it. Even though it does contain an ingredient that you know works fine with you, you might be affected by something else that's in these combination drinks. So for me, for now, I'm sticking with what I know, but you can find out more about all of these at the link down below this video. I may try a little bit more of the Focus Aid or the Yerbucha, this one at least, uh, later on to see what effect they have on me and how I react. If I discover something wonderful or worrisome, I'll make another video and let you know. You can keep checking back for future videos or you can click that subscribe button and the bell next to it. You'll get notified when our videos go up. See you on the next review. Epic review, guys. Wanna watch it all?